today we're gonna eat everything from dino bone-in meatballs to fried eels. One kilogram of meat onto a rib. And I'm gonna show you everything to eat on an extreme food tour when you're in Surabaya. The size of your face with the handle attached for the bone. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so huge, you can barely get your mouth around it. The jiggliness of this tendon. You have to go vertical, booty. Vertical. This is like a Disneyland of food. Oh man, I love the action, the energy. I love everything about this place already. One eye down, but we're gonna keep on eating. To begin this extreme Indonesian food tour in Surabaya, we are eating at a place called Bakso Chak Atang. Mr. Atang, he's the owner, and Bakso are Indonesian meatballs, but he takes it to the next level with these massive meatballs with the bone in. You have, this is something you have to see. Whoa. <laughs> Ying. Did you see this meatball? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, he's Mr. Ateng, okay. Oh, these meatballs are huge. <laughs> Mr. Ateng. Okay. The bone marrow. <laughs> he keeps coming out with more. Okay. <laughs> Bakso. Pandong. Pa Bakso pandong. Yeah, yeah. The bone in. The bone-in bakso? Yeah. So along with the normal-sized bakso, which are just normal-sized meatballs, yeah, so the yeah. size of golf balls, he specializes in the bone-in meatball. It's the size of your face with the handle attached for the bone. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes. And he, this is what he's most known for, are these giant meatballs. And so we're going to see him with this. Is, I mean, this is definitely what we're ordering as he prepares it. Giant dino meatballs. Oh, this is our meatball. Terima kasih. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Beefy aromas coming out of this cart are unbelievable. And the way they, they set up their bakso is they have this, this pan, which is heated, and they have all the different assortment of different sized meatballs and organs and beef parts all around in this donut shape. In the center is where the broth is boiling and they include all the organs in there. There's pieces of the throat, pieces of lumps of fat, which have just been boiling away, creating that broth in the center. So then you choose, mix and match your meatballs. If you want the dino bone-in meatball, if you want the regular sized meatball, medium sized meatball, they have it. Your choice of meatball, any size you want. And then after that, the soup goes on top. They also have noodles that you can order. And yeah, it's really beefy. You, I mean, there's no denying the, the beef cow aroma of this place. They keep loading it up. When supplies get low, they just keep mixing and matching, adding in more meatballs. Mixing that broth with different parts of the, the fat, scooping in. They just, oh, they have it down to a science. Oh man, the owner, Mr. Ateng, he's so friendly as well. And he's very happy. You can tell how proud he is of his giant rib bone meatballs. And in Bahasa, they call it the, the bakso, 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 iga. bakso iga. Yeah. Iga means the rib bone, yeah, the rib bone. Yeah. Um, and so it looks like, I mean, they take the, the beef paste. Bakso is common throughout Indonesia. And it's this beef, pounded beef paste, which then is formed into meatballs. These are the regular sized, uh, the regular sized. like little golf balls or little ping pong balls is, would be the, the typical size for a bakso beef balls. But then this. It's almost, is uh, it's almost one kilogram. One kilogram of meat yeah. onto a rib. It's a head-sized meatball <laughs> with a handle. It's straight up. This is like a dinosaur, dinosaur meatball, almost a weapon, a meatball weapon. <laughs> it's huge. It's, it's huge. a family-sized meatball. <laughs> yeah, it's family -sized. I think it's enough for four to five people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just want to pick this up and okay. Here we go, meatball on a rib bone. I'm going in. You gotta put your entire face into it. It goes up your nose a little bit. Mmm. Mmm. 
all the beefiness, the sponginess, the oily juices of the beef just come out of it. Wow. A little bit of black pepper in there. I like the texture, the garlic, and that's so much fun to eat. Oh man, anytime you can pick up a bone, it's one of the most rewarding meat experiences you can have. But when you can pick up the bone and you have this giant head-sized meatball attached to it, which the, the beef has been pounded into a paste then reformed into a ball onto the end of the rib, that's just so cool. I mean, what a, what a food. This is amazing. It's so huge. You can barely get your mouth around it until your nose just plants into the meatball. Oh man, there's so much texture going on. Look at the inside of it. You've got the, the meat paste, which is kind of spongy. You even might have some organs and some things inside of there to give it some other textures, some extra textures. I'm gonna rehydrate it with some of that extra beef broth. And man, that soup is so rich and oily. When you add that broth and then take a bite, it just immediately coats your lip and lips in this oily beefiness. I mean, that broth is just straight up all the organs and fat just melted down. It's so rich, so beefy, so much flavor. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, like pieces of skin. It's like a waterfall. I don't ever want to eat another meatball unless it's attached to dino bone as a handle. Oh man. And as you keep on eating, you kind of got to eat your way around so that you don't, so it doesn't fall off the bone. I think we're getting close to the bone in the center here. Um, and as the more I get to the center, there's actually other things. I don't know if that's cabbage. Is it cabbage on the inside? And there's also pieces, looks like there's even pieces of meat, straight up pieces of meat inside. There's so many different meat textures, so many beef parts within this meatball. It's like the whole cow on a bone on a single giant meatball. Okay, I think we'll take it off the bone now. Yeah, look. Oh, there's straight up like... A piece of meat. Oh, yeah, there's a piece of meat on the inside. A goodie. Oh, and the whole bone, the attached. So, I mean, you could just keep on eating at the bone if you're sharing it with your whole family. You could break it off. Okay. Oh, oh, let's try that inside. Oh. Come on, got life, huh? That's braised until it just melts in your mouth completely. Oh, it's so tender. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, thank you. The chendal. We're having a chendal in the middle of a, a giant meal. Oh, we gotta stir it, okay. <laughs> no, there's coconut milk. I think the pandan noodles and the palm sugar on the bottom, okay. All right, is that good? Ooh. This is what we need in the middle of a meatball, something refreshing and sweet. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice, that palm sugar, the richness of the coconut crumb, the iciness, and the little pandan noodles is really good. Chendal. And so your shop is right behind the bakso yes, restaurant, okay. Right bakso. So you can come here, eat bakso, and also have a chendal while you're at it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take, now the, the meatball has totally been dismantled from the bone, so we're all sharing it. Dip in, oh look, I mean that's like a straight up piece of brisket, and inside of that came from inside of the meatball. Add it to my bowl. And then I'll try some of the, the regular sized meatballs and some of the noodles as well. But gotta add on some chili. Mm. Oh yeah, I like it with that, that sambal. A little extra chili flavor and with the squeeze of lime juice also to, to contrast the, the richness of the beef. And I've got this big chunk of meaty like almost briskety, briskety beef. Gonna add on a little more of that sambal. Mm. I love it with that sambal. Yeah. And I think it's also very popular. Yeah. A lot of Indonesians would they add ketchup manis yeah. and even ketchup, even tomato yeah. sauce. Tomato sauce so, and ketchup manis. These are two very common condiments, sauce, tomato, tomato sauce, and also ketchup manis, which is like a sweet soy sauce. It's also very common to add to your, your bowl. I might try a little bit of ketchup manis. And people add this to the soup. Like that? And ketchup too. Let's try it the, the Indonesian style way. Is that good? 
I don't think I've ever had a bowl of, bowl of noodles like this with tomato sauce on the inside. Is that in Suda, is that in Surabaya style or all over Indonesia? All over Indonesia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. That is good. A little bit of acidity from acidity from the tomato sauce, the sweetness, saltiness from the ketchup manis, and then the chili sauce, the lime juice. You got more of a, a sweet and sour flavor going now in your broth. I'm not sure you could ever go back to eating a normal meatball after eating a, eating a dino meatball with a bone handle. That's the most fun you'll ever have eating a meatball in your life. I mean, it's kind of like every part of the entire cow just cut up into different pieces, made into different forms, shapes, textures, balls of all kinds, shapes and sizes. Even the organs, the innards, the fat, the skin, all boiled into the soup. It literally is the entire cow, just in different preparation, in different varieties. Man, yeah, this is a beefy experience. We're continuing with this extreme street food tour in Surabaya, and the next dish that we're gonna eat is called Kikil Sapi, and we got here right as they opened. So we're in the kitchen now. They have a street food cart inside, kind of like an inside shop house street food cart. Just in case you're wondering, what is Kikil Sapi? It is the, the cow bones, I think the cow ankle bones, uh, kind of those trotters of the cows, which is made into a soup, a thick, rich soup, almost like a stew. It smells so good. And I mean, this place is legendary, absolutely famous for it. Uh, what a dish, that aroma of that broth, that thick oily layer on top, the red oil, the color of that soup is incredible. Is all the foot bones, the ankle, the cow trotters, so they scoop it out. Wow. You can see all that gelatinous bit, the, the jelly connected, the ankle material. Oh, and there's college, uh, there's, uh, there's other pieces of, back here I think there's pieces of skin, pieces of gelatin. And then when you eat the beef ankle soup, you can choose to eat regular rice or lantong, which are the compressed rice cakes, steamed in banana leaves. So she's slicing some up, you get a plate of that. That's what I want to eat, definitely. I love lantong. It goes so well together with, I mean, with everything, with satay, with soup. It has a nice texture to it. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> Very good. It's better to eat uh, uh, nasi puti or lantong? Female like a lantong because it's not too heavy. Oh, okay, but okay. Men uh, don't like lantong because it's, <laughs> it's not full. It's not full enough? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> We've got two different versions. This one is the regular version, and then we got the extreme plate, which includes the bigger bones, full, just absolutely loaded with marrow, served with straws to suck it out. Um, the tendon, the jelly, yes, the straws. Look at this. Look at this piece of tendon. That's one single piece of tendon, like down the entire ankle. Let's taste that broth first. We have to taste that broth. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, that is beefy. Oh, you can immediately feel the, the jelliness on your lips. Kind of sticky lips immediately. Oh. You can actually taste the sweetness of the bones in there, which have been boiled. And I'm sure some of the marrow has even come out of it as well. The aroma of the, the herbs in there as well. Yeah. Turmeric. Turmeric. Uh, probably garlic and yeah, shallots. Garlic. This is uh, a little bit different. Uh, the color is just like soto. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally different. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Oh wow. Let's do a little bit of seasoning. Yeah. Limes. Lime is important. Lime is very important. Yeah, to cut the the richness. And here's the sambal. Can I? Oh. Oh, it's chunky. Can I have a meal without sambal? So would you put this directly into the soup? Yeah. Into the soup or anywhere you want, just... Anywhere you want, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, I think we'll just do that for now. And then we'll probably add more sambal as we, as we keep on eating. Let's go for the bones next. Yeah. Let's go for those bones. Let's do the straws. Thank you. <laughs> My favorite eating utensil, a straw. Wow. Oh, 
You can see the, mar the marrow inside of there. Yeah, it's huge. Look at the marrow. Uh, you can put the... Load it up with broth. broth. Oh, that's a great idea. Broth. Fill it up with broth. Let's add some sambal while we're at it. Pack it all in. Oh, just, you can make a little soup in the bone. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, all oh, the nuggets of bone marrow, just so rich. You just melt going down. Oh, delicious. And that is a, an amazing move to add the broth there. Mm. Yeah, and you want to just keep loading it up with the broth. Okay, try to get all the bone marrow out that you can, all the, all the little pieces. Wow. Wow. That's the greatest thing you'll ever drink with a straw. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, I love how you'll just see people around the restaurant just slurping down with straws. And they're not using the straws for cups of, cups of water or cups of ice. They're using them for the bones. Oh, so you just keep on filling it up? Yeah. Booty, you are a, you're a pro. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> I'm going to squeeze in some lime juice into the bone. Then go in for some sambal into the bone. And then push that down with the broth. Oh yes. Oh yes. Let it all mix together. And then you can kind of <laughs> stir it around, yes, in there. Mm. Wow, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's delicious. <laughs> Don't inhale too big on that straw. Those chili fumes will go all the way to the back of your throat. Oh, I love it. Okay. That bone marrow is absolutely incredible. Let's move on to try some other parts of the ankle. Okay, I'm going to try it with the, with the soup with the, the lontong this time. And I got lontong and I got white rice as well. Mm-hmm. I love lontong. Yeah. Compressed, gummy, fragrant, delicious. And I have to try that tendon. Okay. Here, it keeps on coming. The jiggliness of this tendon. It literally is a tendon, like you can see it going all the way down the ankle of the cow. You could bungee jump with this tendon. We both got a, a half a foot of tendon. Yes. Uh, same size. <laughs> you have to go vertical, booty. Vertical. That's a straight up slip and slide in your mouth. <laughs> oh man. Mmm. Oh tendon is amazing. We gotta gnaw on that the bone. They also have uh, all that yeah, gelatin, gelatin, yeah. Gelatin. All the gelatin. Mmm. Gelatinous. But again, that's cooked so it's soft and tender. Ooh. I'm driven, the juice is up. But that's all the connective tissue, the joint, the, the connective jelly. Oh. oh, I just splattered in my eye. Oh. Can the tissue? Thank you. <laughs> I'm okay. You good? One eye down, but we're gonna keep on eating. <laughs> Definitely when you eat something this jiggly, you need to be careful of splatter. Oh, and it's so worth it. Okay, next up. This is a good piece. Yeah, that's a good piece. It's from the, from the foot as well. It's kind of yeah. curled up. Halloween. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That piece is like straight up cartilage. It has a crunch to it. Gelatinous. Multiple dimensions of texture. Well, yeah, what a dish uh, and another amazing place. And I think the highlight is the bone marrow, just sucking it out with the straw, filling it up with the broth, the sambal, squeezing in that lime juice to balance the whole flavor. Then, yeah, come here for the bone marrow.
Kiki Lusapi, what a spot. We're moving on to the next extreme Indonesian food in Surabaya. Budi highly recommended it. He said he loves to eat this. Where are we at now? Uh, we are at uh, Special Blood Surabaya Hajipur. This is a legendary food in Surabaya. And what are what are they famous for? They are famous for eel. Okay. Yeah. And before we eat, they've invited us to go see the live eels. So they bring all the eels uh, to the shop. They're ready to be cooked, but they keep the eels and they raise the eels at their house, which they said is just a, a really quick motorbike away. So we're going to go see the live eels first. Oh, yes. What did you say is your name? Uh, my name is Angelina. Angelina, okay, yeah. cool. Very cool to meet you. <laughs> and you're the granddaughter yes, of I the am. owner the, yes. who started it? Uh, my grandpa started the business okay. since, 18, since 1986. Wow, okay. And the first shop was located in a traditional market here okay. called Pasar Boabang. Ah, okay. And then they moved there in 2011 or 12. Okay. But still, still, this is the original shop yes, now. Yes. Okay. This is the original shop. Okay. The past of way. Oh, I see. Because of the U-turn. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, mm, this is the eels. the eel shelter. Okay. Yes. <laughs> nice. The water is being changed. Ah, okay. To each like two times a day. Okay. So uh, in the morning before we put this in our tanks like this and we get them to our shore, we change it first, the water. And then at night, before we close all of this, we change it again. How many eels is this right here, do you think? Um, I don't know, maybe about like 100 kilograms? Okay, about 100 kilograms. 100. 100 okay. Like 200. Because A few like, thousand eels in there? Yes. Probably? Probably. We have a pool of the fresh eels, and at the restaurant, they sell about 130 to 135 kilos of eels per day. And she just said that it's about eight to 10 eels per kilo. So you can do the math about how many eels that is per day. We're in the eel kitchen right now, so they have all the eels cleaned, diced, ready to go in about a couple inch slices. Then before he deep fries them, they go into this marinade. Oh man, nice, they get a nice dunking this juicy marinade, and then into the oil. Okay. Um, and then directly into the hot oil, it just balloon up, puff up. And then he kind of has a two, two part process where they, they fry in one oil and then transfer to the next wok for the finishing process. And here. Hi. <laughs> eel is fried and ready. And she's gonna, you, I mean, you need to have sambal when you eat eel. So she's about to make a fresh batch of sambal for us. Shrimp paste? Okay, yes. And then we've got chilies and tomatoes. They go in. Oh, yes. So this one is for the spicy sambal. There were like 20 chilies, about 20 chilies on the spicy sambal. Ah, okay. Oh, so this one is for us with a special sauce. Oh, and the eels go in. Giant, giant, yeah, giant cloves of garlic gets smashed into the oil. Oh, nice. And then the eels going in. Oh, so that's a really quick fry. Okay. I love the process, the combination, the sambal. And so you can order your level of spice in the sambal. And it goes onto this clay plate. 
uh, kind of makes the base. And then your choice of eels goes directly on top of that sambal, served to you with some huge cloves of deep fried garlic as well. Man, the aromatics are incredible. Oh wow, what a dish. Udi, let's go together. Let's start with the, the crispy one. These are the crispy eels, crispy eels. And grab some of the sambal as well. Yeah. Grab some of the sambal onto the rice. Got to get those cloves of garlic. I love how there's such giant cloves of garlic as well. Yeah. And the bones. Oh, but you can already see the how tender, how juicy and oily that that uh, yeah. eel will be. Very take juicy. it, take a little. Yes, and oily, right? Mix it with the rice. And we got the different side dishes as well. It comes with cucumber and it looks almost like lemon basil. Yeah, lemon basil. Lemon basil? Okay. All right. Oh man. Budi, thank you. <laughs> Try. Amazing. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, it's tasty. Very, Very good. Tasty. Very good. Yeah. The eels are so buttery and creamy and oily. Those huge cloves of garlic give it so much flavor and aroma. And then the sambal on the bottom with that tomato with the chili. Wow. Really, really tasty. I think try the next one. Okay. This is the, this is the, the less crispy. And this is the, the extra spicy. Extra spicy. Extra spicy yeah. sambal. Okay. Get a lot of that sambal. Piece of the garlic. Even the garlic is soft. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the garlic has so much flavor too. It's very Aromatic. Yeah. Oh, I love the eels. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Okay. This one That's, is so good. Yeah. They're both Very good. Delicious. Okay. That one though with the extra spicy sambal, with the more garlic, with that special sauce and seasoning. And the eels are not as crispy. Yeah. They're more, you've got more of that uh, jelly, creamy, oily fattiness of the of the eels without being crispy. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think which one do you like better? I, I think I like this the one. Yeah. the softer eels? Yeah, I yeah. think so. It has a more of a, a punch of flavor. Punch of flavor yeah. Yes. I mean this restaurant totally specializes in eel. They're eel specialists. And I love how they toss in the entire head of garlic, peels and everything, just smashed and fried in that oil. Oh man, this is so tasty. Unbelievable flavor. And when they, when they serve it like this in these clay, clay bowls with the sambal on the bottom, the oils from the eels just kind of absorb into that sambal and kind of mix, making it into that sauce. You can never have enough of that sambal. So rich, oily, creamy, a burst of saltiness. And then they do have some some garnishing vegetables. So you take all the, yeah. the leaves of the, the, leaves. the lemon basil yeah. off. Mm. Oh man, lemon basil, that just gives your, your mouth this entire refreshing, citrusy taste, aroma. Mm. Man, I love lemon basil, it's so aromatic. These eels are absolutely sensational and i love how you do can choose your different texture deep friedness but that sambal is just what makes all the difference what a combination it's so so addictive wow that was tasty so good Thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Man, highly recommended, especially if you love eels. This is a place you're not going to want to miss when you come to Surabaya. And the Surabaya style of making these eels with that sambal, outstanding, so tasty. But the tour continues and we have another place that we're going to that is an extreme food that's famous late at night. So, oh, we, we drove over to North Surabaya and we're here to eat a dish called nasi babat. And look at the crowd. Wow, look at the queue. 
Booty, does this place always have a queue? Oh, always. always. Always, every single uh, night? Every single night. <laughs> every single uh, night. This is not long queue. Yeah. This is a short uh, queue tonight? In the dinner time, you, until... Oh, it will be all, all the way to the, <laughs> the, way to the next street back there? Yeah. But packed. Packed. Everyone waits in line. They serve out the rice. And then, uh, I mean, there's so many things going on. This is like a... Whoa, the rice. A fresh batch of rice is ready. This is like a Disneyland of food. So many things. Here's a fresh batch of the rice. There's rice, but I think there might be corn inside of the rice as well. You can smell the sweet corn aroma. He's adding in a new fresh batch. Okay. Is this the one, the babat? Yes. Okay, this is the babat. This is the babat. <laughs> babat, okay. Oh, so it's a mix. Mix of organs, okay. Are you speaking English? English you mind okay, you? no problem. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. Oh. Oh. oh, that smells so good. So <laughs> wow. Fried lungs. It looks like fried lungs, I think. The dish we came here to eat and the dish that everybody comes here to eat is called nasi babat. And babat is the cow uh, stomach. And so they deep fry the cow stomach along with some of the other organs like intestines, like lungs. Um, and they mix it. You can, I mean, you smell the spices. Definitely black pepper in there, maybe some turmeric in there. I think that's oil, which is bubbling up. So they deep fry it all. And then you get corn rice to go with it. And then you can choose some other sides, some other toppings, some definitely some sambal to go with your meal as well. But that's the main dish frying there, the cow stomach. That's what we came to eat, what everybody comes to eat. Babat. There's just action happening all over the place. Things pouring in. I love the action, the energy. I love everything about this place already. This one is cooked already, okay. Wow. That aroma, the pepper in there. <laughs> this place, this place is absolutely amazing. Oh, I love the action, the energy, the friendliness, and just the style. But it's all about the cow organs here, which are deep fried, marinated, served over corn rice. And this place is extremely popular. Budi was also telling me that this dish is originally from Madura? Yeah, this is originally from Madura. Okay, okay. Yeah. And it's very popular. Oh, nice, the drinks have arrived. Okay, terima kasih. And we are balancing on a small little wooden bench, uh, nice, a nice, a nice uh, stainless steel table, yeah. and they hooked it up with some extra, extra sambal. So with the sambal, oh, you got to go for those organs, the cow, uh, the, the stomach, yes, with the sambal. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh yeah, there's intestines in there too. All right, booty. Oh. Mmm. Oh, wow. Oh, it's so tender. So tender. Yeah. 12 hours. They cook it for 12 hours. Cooked for 12 hours. And that's before it deep fries. Yeah, before it deep fries. Mmm. And the spices on there. The pepper. I taste a lot of pepper, yeah? Pepper, yeah. And I mean, I, when they were frying it, I could smell the black pepper. But it's just like so vibrant with black pepper. I'm sure there's some uh, turmeric in there to make it yellow. The chilies, garlic. the garlic. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now I know why everyone's here. That flavor is just, it's so good. Yeah. And it's not even like chewy or rubbery at all. It's yeah. just so, so tender. tender. Yeah. So tender. That melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's tasty. And so you can kind of mix with the crunchy, crunchy fritters. Oh, you've got intestine uh, next. Intestine, yeah. Okay, intestine next. Got to get some sambal on there. For the intestines. Oh, wow. Man, what's amazing about all the organs are they're not irony, they're not gamey tasting, they're just so tender, so peppery. And I'm sure that has to do with the spices, the way they've cleaned the organs. Man, and frying and, I mean, boiling and then frying. But such a clean but oily, delicious taste. Wow, that's good. And you've got so many different textures in here too. Oh yeah, find the shrimp in here and pick it up. Maybe it's easier. Oh yeah, really crispy, a little bit oily. And you've got that fragrance of the shrimp, especially with the shell on it, giving it that extra condensed flavor of the shrimp. Man. 
so many different textures. Okay, next up for the, the piece of lung. For more of that lung now. Mm. I mean, even the lung is so tender. Yeah. <laughs> tender, slightly spongy. Again, absorbed all of that black pepper, all of the oiliness, the friedness. So you've got that, oh, oh, you can feel how blubbery it is. Yeah, it is jelly. It's so sticky, so much collagen. Yeah, you actually have to pick that up. Okay, this is the, the cow skin, but from the, the hoof. Yeah. From the hoof. Like, like the cow trotters. Oh yeah, that's just so, so jelly, so tender. It literally has the texture of jello in your mouth. I think my favorite thing on the whole plate. The stomach, the stomach is so good. And again, the flavor of the pepper, yeah. It's so addictively tasty. Incredible. What another just extraordinary meal in Surabaya, in Indonesia. The flavors, the chilies, the sambal, the components all together on one plate. It just makes it so special, so such a well-rounded meal. That was outstanding, and what a day of extreme Indonesian food in Surabaya. I'll have all the information in the description box below everywhere we ate, and a huge thank you to my friend Budi uh, for arranging everything and for taking me around. And thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. And also make sure you watch this entire Surabaya food series where we're eating some of the best Indonesian food in Surabaya. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Good night.